In this video, we are going to look at constructing possibility spaces or sample spaces in order to find probabilities of various events. In question one, it says, you flip two unbiased coins simultaneously. Find the probability that they both show up heads. What we can do first is list out the possibility space or sample space for each coin. Now, each coin has two possible outcomes. We've got heads and tails, which I will abbreviate using H and T. Now, the second coin also has two possible outcomes, heads and tails. So what we have is a sample space for flipping coin one, a sample space for flipping coin two. Also note that for each coin, the two outcomes are equally likely because we're told the coins are unbiased. That means they're fair. You've got a probability of a half of the coin showing up heads and a probability of a half of the coin showing up tails. That's true for both coins. Now, what we're doing in this question is flipping two coins simultaneously. So this is a combined experiment and we can show all the possible outcomes by drawing a sample space diagram for the combined experiment. And a table is often helpful for doing this kind of thing. I'm going to show the possible outcomes for coin one, like this, and the possible outcomes for coin two, like this. And you can see here we have a table and we can fill in the possible outcomes of this combined experiment. The first outcome you could have is heads on coin one and heads on coin two. You could also have heads on coin one and tails on coin two. You could have tails on coin one and heads on coin two, or you could have tails on coin one and tails on coin two. So these are the four possible outcomes of flipping the two coins simultaneously. And what's important here is that each of these four outcomes is equally likely. And that's because the two outcomes in the sample spaces for coin one and coin two were each equally likely themselves. So what is the probability that they both show up heads? Well, there are four equally likely outcomes here. Only one of them involves both coins showing up heads. So the answer to the question is the probability that they both show up heads is one quarter. Now, notice I showed the sample space for each coin using set notation. These brackets here, the curly brackets you might remember from lesson P6A are what we use for set notation. All we really have here, for example, is the set of possible outcomes when we flip coin one. We've got two elements in this set, heads and tails. Those are the two possible outcomes. Same thing with coin two. So the sample space or possibility space for the combined experiment would be the set of all possible outcomes when flipping both coins. And I'll just list that up here. So technically, this is the sample space or possibility space for the combined experiment. But when you're actually doing questions, it is easier to stick with the table than to try and list out in set notation straight away. This is because the table helps you make sure that you don't miss anything out. It's really clear from the table when you set it up that you're going to have to have four outcomes because it's a two by two table. Let's move on to question two. This time we flip a fair coin once and then we flip it again. So instead of having two separate coins, we flip the same coin twice. And now we need to find the probability that the coin shows up heads both times. Well, this is actually going to give us exactly the same answer. Instead of coin one and coin two, we've got the first flip 
and the second flip. But the sample spaces in both cases are still the same. The first flip could give us heads or tails. The second flip could also give us heads or tails. And because we've got a fair coin, which is just another word for unbiased, these two outcomes are equally likely and these two outcomes are equally likely. So we're going to get exactly the same sample space diagram for the combined experiment as we had in question one. And this means that the probability that the coin shows up heads both times is again one quarter. We've got one outcome where the coin shows up heads both times out of four possible outcomes. In question three, we are now rolling two fair dice. And then what we do is add up the two scores. Then we have to answer a series of questions. Let's first focus on each individual dice. So on the first dice, we have six possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And on the second dice, we also have six possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And because we're told they are fair dice, we know that these six outcomes are equally likely on each dice. By the way, some people will argue that we should call each of these things a die rather than a dice, because dice is really the plural and die is the singular. However, in modern English, we can just call them each a dice because it's become so common, we just accept it now. So we can say, here's one dice, here's another dice. Anyway, we've got the two sample spaces and we can now construct a sample space diagram or a possibility space diagram for the combined experiment by creating a table. Our table now needs to look something like this. We have got all the possible outcomes for dice one and all the possible outcomes for dice two. Now I could list out the outcomes in this table just like I did with the heads and tails as follows. I could do one and a one, one and a two, one and a three and so on and complete the whole table. But I can actually save myself a bit of trouble here and avoid doing this because all we're really interested in is what we get when we add up the two scores. So instead of a one and a one, I could add them up and just put a two because that is the total of these two scores. Similarly, instead of this one and a two, I could just add up the scores and get a three there. The next one would be a four and so on. Pause the video and complete this table for yourself. Here's what you should have got. So this is a sample space diagram or possibility space diagram showing all the possible outcomes when you roll two fair dice and add up the two scores. We have got 36 possible outcomes here because it's a six by six table. And we can answer these questions fairly quickly now. The smallest possible total you can get is two. That's just by getting a one on each dice. Now, obviously that was quite an easy question. You don't really need the table to work that out. You know, the smallest total you can get would be one plus one because one is the smallest number you could get on each dice. Next. Find the probability that you roll a total of five. Well, for this question, we want a total of five. And you can see you can get a total of five by getting a four and a one, four and a one. Or we could get a five by rolling a three and a two. Or we could get a five by rolling a two and a three. And finally, we could get a five by rolling a one and a four. 
Now, because these two dice are different dice, getting a four and a one is not the same as getting a one and a four. And similarly, getting a three and a two is not the same as getting a two and a three. So these are different outcomes. Altogether then, there are four outcomes that give us a total of five out of 36 possible outcomes. So the probability for B is simply four thirty-sixths, and that simplifies to one ninth. For part C, we now need to find the probability that the total is a multiple of three. So let's look at our table, our sample space diagram. Three is a multiple of three, so is six, so we need to highlight all of these. And so is nine, and so is 12. What I've done is highlight in green all the multiples of three in the sample space diagram. And out of the 36 possible outcomes, how many then are multiples of three? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the probability that we get a total that is a multiple of three is 12 over 36, and that simplifies to one third. In question four, you flip a fair coin and you roll a fair dice. So this is a combined experiment involving two different objects. This is different from what we did before. In the first two questions, you had two coins. In question three, you had two dice, but now in question four, we've got a coin and a dice. And we need to find the probability that we get a tails on the coin and a three on the dice. So let's just remind ourselves the sample space or possibility space for a coin is simply this. These are the two possible outcomes. And these are equally likely because we're told it's a fair coin. The sample space for a dice is one, two, three, four, five, and six. And again, each of these outcomes are equally likely because it's a fair dice. And what we need to do now is construct a table to show the possible outcomes of this combined experiment. Pause the video and have a go at that yourself or keep watching for a hint if you're not sure. Your table should start to look like this. We've got the two possible outcomes from the coin, heads and tails, and then we've got the six possible outcomes from the dice. And when you combine these experiments, you have 12 possible outcomes because it's a two by six table. I've filled in some of the outcomes here. We've got a heads and a one, so I'm just representing that using H and one. Here we've got heads and five. Here we've got tails and six. If you haven't already got a completed table, pause the video and make sure you've got this table completely filled in. This is what your sample space diagram should look like. The table has been completely filled in and we can see we've got 12 possible outcomes and only one of those is a tails and a three. That is this outcome here. So the probability we're looking for is simply one twelfth. This one out of the 12 possible outcomes. You might like to try an extra question Pause the video and have a go. Here's the answer. We are interested in the following outcomes. This one here because it's got a tails. This one here because it's got a tails. We're still interested in this one because it's got a tails and actually it's got a three. This one's got a tails, this one's got a tails and this one's got a tails. But we're also interested in this outcome here because it has a three even though it doesn't have a tails. So these are all the outcomes that have a tails or a three, or both, that's this one here. 
So altogether we've got seven outcomes out of 12 that involve you getting a tails or a three or both. So the probability is simply seven twelfths.